Welcome back to DMG's Third and Wrong YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to be going over our top 10 QB prospects uh, post-combine, of course. Uh, Gage and Dylan are here today. Fellas, how's it going? It's going good. Long day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, long, Pressing cold couple day days. Work. Oh, yeah, we love those long days, though. ASC just seems to get stronger and stronger and stronger every day. Oh, yeah. But before we get into the video, make sure you guys smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and stay tuned for more videos like this because they're going to be popping out and they're going to be some bangers. So with that all being said, moving in to number one in the top 10 QB prospects post-combine is Malik, the man who sucks. Just kidding. Malik Willis. I'm not going to. Yeah, Malik Willis out of Liberty. Um, Gage. We talked a lot of trash about this guy yeah. before, and now we have him at one. Yeah, we're um, eating our words here a little bit. I, but... I, I, I do want to say uh, one thing. Go ahead. So before we get into all of this, I I do have to say the amount of like unscripted videos that came out for Malik Willis in Indianapolis was a little strange to me. And um, not this. <laughs> one of the videos I just have to bring it up. One of the videos was posted by a brand like um marketer and stuff like that. So I don't know. I I would just look into those kinds of things when you see them. But I do think Malik Willis is a good guy. I just think that they're trying pretty hard to make him seem like the best quarterback in this draft. But he does look the part in on the field, so you can't really complain about that. Yeah. I have this thing with like picking quarterbacks in the draft that are just the the toolsy quarterbacks you know they didn't really show much in college or not that great in college and then they do well in the nfl or they crash and burn like there is no in between and it just seems like the last like three projects that's come out of the draft for quarterback has worked out for that so i'm gonna eat my words and just go with malik willis as number one because he does have the speed he does have the arm strength I think it will take a good situation for him to go to to succeed, but we'll see. I don't know. At least Lamar Jackson's six three. I mean, this guy is like barely six foot, so yeah. that's a problem. However, he does look like the number one quarterback. Yeah, he actually looked all right at the combine. But let's let's move on to the one that we really want to be number one. Yeah. Got, yeah, we got Desmond Ritter here. Yeah. The Riddler. Um, I'll mute that. Uh, this guy, I think like, the only the problem with him that we kind of have gone with is his accuracy. Accuracy issues. And if you go and watch, it's usually because of his dropbacks and the way he plants his feet and releases. So it's all technique and timing. All stuff that's coachable um, and not something that's just not talent-related. So yeah. if he's able to fix that stuff, I mean, he's... Look at Josh Allen, for example, A. Eh? Yeah. Yep, Josh Allen did it, so now everyone else is going to be able to, according to the way it's going to be drafted for a bit. Well, and, and the thing with Ritter is he has a lot of experience as the yeah. leader, like the go-to guy, the face of the franchise, as you could put it with the Barry Cats. So I think that experience for him is going to kind of put him, at, like separate him from the rest of the pack that's in here because there's a lot of good throwers and a lot of good like system quarterbacks, but I think Desmond Ritter has that potential to be the future of a franchise along with Malik Willis. But I think that's where these two are kind of the franchise potential hopefuls, you know? So I really like Desmond Ritter. He's yeah. also a little bit older because he's played in the college longer. He is probably like the only legitimate winner mm. out of all these guys, you can say, in college. Yeah, he, he, he would be our number one if Malik wasn't such a freak athletically. Yeah. yeah. 
And then moving on to three, we got Kenny Pickett, who we all kind of believe to be the, the most ready to play in the NFL as of right now. Maybe not that highest ceiling, but if you're going to throw somebody out in the field week one, he's probably going to be the best equipped to go ahead and do so. Even yeah. with his tiny, tiny, tiny hands. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to bring it up this time, but um, Kennedy Two Gloves to me is, I don't know, for me it, it's too close to a sore subject in Carson Wentz um, for just my own personal experience. Um, he doesn't have the size of Wentz, but he has some good tendencies. Um, you know, he's not a carbon copy, but... Um, Kenny will be able to, you know, get out on the corner, get, move the pocket, make some good throws and everything like that. But like we were talking about with Malik Willis and Desmond Ritter, he, he's not necessarily a toolsy guy. Yeah. Not really much more to say about Kenny. Yeah. There's a lot that's been said. Yeah. These are three. Yeah. All right, number, number four. four. Sam Howell. Um, he has the most experience out of everyone, but didn't really look like anything more than a game manager the last two years, um, whether that be him losing a ton of talent or if it was him just not being as great. But he still has a good arm. He's got accuracy. He's got a lot of experience, but he's not necessarily toolsy. He's shorter than Kenny Pickett and um, reminds too many people of Baker Mayfield. So, And it didn't help that in his senior bowl, he fumbled two strip sacks and back-to-back drives. Yeah. So, yeah. I got nothing on these guys really, man. <laughs> I do not, think not gonna say anything. I do think Sam Howell could potentially have a better rookie year than Kenny Pickett. Personally. Sure, but yeah. but Kenny Pickett, um I feel like his coming on a higher trajectory right now. Uh, Mikey's staying quiet because honestly, there should be one or two quarterbacks maybe that make first round and there's going to be like three or four somehow that get drafted in the first round. Yeah. Let's just move on to five. Yeah. yeah. Carson uh, Strong. Carson Strong out of Nevada. He is really good. His He's got the arm. He's extremely accurate and he's really strong-armed and he throws a beautiful deep ball. Mm-hmm. He is just extremely immobile, though. Yeah, he and is. It does not bode well currently in a, in the NFL. Now, I see this guy as a backup right now, but it's got a good potential to play later. Oh yeah, and like a he um, is somebody that I'm like comfortable with, where, where like people are projecting him. Like he's somebody that I would be willing to draft in the second or third round. Yeah, it's it's feeling more like that's third than anything else. Yeah. Um, really, it's just his his knees and mobility. Yeah, he's coming off an injured yeah. knee, right? I believe so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, he looked really good with the Vada. Um, like you said, strong arm and everything like that. So he, he's got some tools. If a certain GM really likes him, he can go higher than he should go. But yeah. Moving on to six. We got Matt, Matt Corral. We'll let Dylan talk him up. So <laughs> if <laughs> if this was my list, I would have Matt Corral higher than a lot of these quarterbacks. Um, and it's probably bias, I'll be honest. Um, he's one of the first quarterbacks I watched um, multiple games of and like watched every throw. Uh, the thing with Matt Corral that I really like is that he has an elite... Uh, time to throw essentially like his throwing motion is very fast and he can throw the ball on a line in a window and hit wide receivers that way. 
the real thing that is holding Matt Corral back from having people fall in love with him even more is his deep <laughs> ball concerns and um, his ability to get to a second and third read. And um, there, there's different things. You know, that's where, you know, conversations with coaches and players matter and stuff like that to really make that kind of decision. But there's too much unanswered questions with Matt Corral, and he doesn't have anything physical that's an elite trait. And Carson Strong does have that. So I think that's why it makes more sense to have him behind Carson Strong, even though personally he's my number two, I would say. Moving on to <laughs> seven. These guys are uh, people you didn't really hear about. And then just watching in the combine, you're like, these guys are like, I was trying to find like differences like between the quarterbacks. And a couple of these smaller school guys were really like impressive. Like they did not look like they were like you know a step back or behind, and Caleb, uh, geez, Caleb Elaby, he's he was he was throwing him on a line, throwing him on a rope. It was actually really impressive. Not to mention his physical traits. He's rather quick. Um, he is a little bit he is a little bit bigger. He's six one two ten, so not like a like a massive dude, but he's not short. But if you go watch his combine, he did very well in the throwing. Um, and then he obviously had good numbers in, in college, but it's Western Michigan. So yeah, it helped when you were throwing the sky more there too. So yeah, they did a very good job with that. Um, he is extremely accurate in the middle of the field and short game. And then his knocks, I guess, are like kind of the perimeter deep corner throws stuff that has to be like lopped in it's just not that great and we're talking about this this is like a fifth sixth round you pick oh, yeah. up and practice squad or back up maybe see if something can grow later on or he's the next tom brady no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no anyways next yeah moving on number eight yeah Dylan's watched the most on this guy. My number one. He's <laughs> he's a he's a James Morgan um, type of quarterback. Uh, great numbers. He can throw the ball and everything like that. But the biggest thing that stuck out to me watching Bailey Zappi is he would get the ball in shotgun, sit there for five seconds, and then throw to whoever was open or whoever had a height advantage. Um, I just think that really handicaps a quarterback going into the NFL. Um, he does have a good arm, and he can just air it out, you know, in, in a sense. That's why, like, Minshew did pretty good. Um, there's some other of those air raids that, you know, they can go in and, and throw 20 for 24, 22 for 27, you know, really high um, completion rate, but... They're game managers. They don't elevate a team, and that's kind of my opinion on Bailey Zappi. He, he he was one of the. I'd say he's probably one of the guys that stock dropped the most in the combine. After the combine, seeing him throw, um, not that like he was like a super high pick, anyways, but he was he was, you know, somebody like you could look out for this guy, you know, look out for him, look out for him beforehand and then he started watching him throw and it it just didn't it maybe it was just a bad day for him but he was he was missing a few throws a handful of throws actually like stuff that was like noticeable so he he kind of dropped down on our list quite a bit and then lastly we've got brock prudy out of iowa state he's purdy that's purdy Spelt yeah, pretty mouth on you there, Brock. No, whoops. It's all good. <laughs> um, I that, think that, he had a lot that pretty of much hype. says everything about him, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. he, he, he had a lot of hype going into the year. <laughs> I think people were pretty excited for him before the year started. Yeah. But Iowa State started fast, but then they lost to Iowa, and then everything kind of just crumbled. Yeah, they did. Um, 
He, he'll me. be a good backup. Um, he he looked he looked good. He looked he looked like oh okay this guy is a suitable backup like a suitable like career long backup is kind of what he would be which is not like a a knock on him that guy's gonna make a living for the rest of working up as a backup in the NFL congratulations oh, he's gonna make a lot I mean, of money yeah, yeah. be the next clip uh, for Jesus for the Chargers yeah he looked like uh he didn't look great in anything but he didn't look bad at anything just kind of an above average college quarterback that's Jake got the arm that could play in the NFL. Yeah. That's yeah, that's literally kind of what it is. Yeah. But that really that that suit that kind of finishes up our list. It says top 10, there's not even a 10th to really be notable about, so The best but, quarterback in this draft is the one that you don't draft. So well, that's not possible because no one drafted them, so therefore they're not in the NFL. <laughs> Gosh, dude. I'm not looking forward to having to be back in the QB market. Just hope that you don't have to be like uh, the Colts. Please, come on, Baker. All righty. Hit the like button. Let yep. us know what you guys yep. think of these guys. Yep. Subscribe. We're, yep. We love comments. We're going to have our uh, other position groups coming out in succession every day. So. Yep. Yep. We will catch you guys in the next one. Alrighty. Two slid a day.